Good afternoon, all. It's a pleasure to be here today and uh, share our observations on the amazing work that has been judged by esteemed uh, jury of MMA Smarties. Uh, Kantar has been associated with Smarties uh, since more than the years that I can actually recall. Uh, and it has been an enriching experience for me to be part of this personally for uh, three years in a row. The world is going mobile, and uh, there is no doubt about it, given all the discussions that we also heard in the last session. An average person today spends almost five hours um, a day online, and 45% of that time is spent on mobile devices or tablets. With people spending so much time on digital and mobile devices, it's obvious uh, that is where uh, brands need to reach them. But at the same time, uh, we need to consider how we optimally use these devices to connect with consumer. Well, it's evident that digital is going to stay. It has already surpassed and share, um, at share of all other media channels and is projected to continue growing in coming years. Incremental reach is an interesting metric uh, that implies the power of medium to get new audience, while digital could always get notable incremental reach over television. We have witnessed it has increased 2x post-pandemic and even 4x when it comes to CPG campaigns. During pandemic, we saw that majority of winning campaigns were mobile-first executions. And while 2022 did open doors uh, for other channels, we see that winning campaigns are now again relying more on mobile first strategy. However, there is a flip side. There is plenty of evidence that multiple uh, media channels in the campaign tend to be more efficient. From across media database learnings, we know if we add more touch points in the campaign, you get better efficiencies as compared to having a very few media channels. And if you really want a rule of thumb for multimedia campaigns, try to ensure that none of your media commands more than 50% of your spend. As cost efficiency on these channels declines, and that's even too true for digital. When both TV and digital are in shares of 30% is when they are most cost effective. And when we look at across media database globally, we can see some clear results in terms of what are the key levers of paid media that drive greater brand exposure. And it all, all starts with a strong creative. Quality of creative is the single largest driver which explains growth on brand exposure. Which poses the question, uh, do we realize that one of the best way to optimize media money is actually strong creative? If that strong creative is built consistently across touch points, then we are also making the most of the media synergies. So what we observe is great that brands are being less intrusive and adapting more native formats. However, choosing the right context is equally important. As an example, we ran a study for a travel brand which looked at how an Airbnb ad would perform across a range of contexts. 
Well, you may think that uh, you know travel would be like an obvious choice, but and obviously because that is why consumers are looking at holiday destinations or looking for um, you know travel information. What we saw was the news and lifestyle context supported the brand objective better in terms of brand awareness and perception of security. As these contexts provided a better wrapper to stand out rather than being lost among other similar travel ads and articles. So it's essential to understand the surrounding context and how is it really, you know, how does it really fit with your messaging and campaign objectives to avoid joining the conversation inappropriately um, and risking damaging your brand in the process. I mean, testing theories can help refine your strategy and ensure you're getting the most of your media investment. We all know that there are some hard and fast rules uh, when it comes to each platform, all depending on their individual strengths and unique context. For example, Facebook, we know you need to grab attention by having a clear focal point and going beyond the ordinary. On Instagram, image quality is important. It's a platform built on visual appeal, so composition and aesthetics become even more important to capture audience attention. Twitter is more about telling a story, not just using the visuals, but also your words to create a very clear narrative. This customizing creative as per platform makes a massive difference to viewing and to brand impact. Another thing that's important is emotional response to advertising, which can actually help build positive emotional associations with the brand. And it is often one of the main objective of any advertising because these associations on their own can make people predisposed to, the, to choose the brand in future. So engage the audience by generating the right emotional response. And we see that the winning campaign are actually creating more personalized experience for the audience. They are uh, trying to be at the right time and at the right place by targeting locally. And also they're speaking the consumer's language. As per Cantor's media reactions, the latest report of 2023, uh, I remember last year we spoke about the influencer content and we said that, you know, it kind of uh, there among, uh, you know, top three uh, when it comes to, in fact, number one when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, the online channels in terms of the ad expose, exposure recall. But now consumers recall ad exposure on influencer content as bottom three among all other online channels. And what we are also observing that brands are trying to break the clutter. Thus, there's a declining trend on influencer activations. Also bases our recent analysis of global 30 plus different influencer campaigns in beauty, fintech, sports, and retail reveal that influencer content is particularly effective um, in fu functional aspects compared to market averages in our database of almost 9,000 global ads, influencer creative execution, executions are in the top third for uh, delivering new information and being credible. Many consumers also find uh, the content relevant to them, but when it comes to the emotional side of things, uh, there's work to be done. So if you see, the enjoyment of the content is particularly weak and only placing in the bottom 40% of the ads tested in their respective markets. In the most important slide, I would say, we see the single most common factor 
among the winning campaigns is the right measurement. And I obviously want to leave you all guys with this thought that um, you know, there's enough evidence to prove that investing in the right measurement can help the brand garner higher returns. Yeah, so that is all from my side. Thank you.